Thank you. And first of all, uh, I do have to agree with the rector. This is really a great view. So many of you from all over the world. I'd like to congratulate you all, and of course your family, uh, your friends that may be here, and of course your tutors that have guided you through the process toward obtaining your uh, degree. It is an honor and a pleasure to provide you with advice on this very happy occasion. You are the future in the field of health sciences. And I hope that today, as you celebrate the successful completion of your studies, you also start to think about the future, how you can contribute to science, and how you will make a difference for society. In 2001, I was sitting in your seat, and I did not have a clue what would come next. Like you, I was at a fork in the road, as they call it. And you may know Yogi Berra, a very famous US baseball player and coach. He always said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. That's easy to say. Of course, you need to choose the right exit. So let me give you some advice. Ni has prepared you well by laying a solid methodological foundation, but one needs more than rock-solid research methods in order to further develop your talent in this field and to make meaningful contributions to the world. Whatever career and life you pursue, I hope that you frequently ask yourself the following three questions. Am I doing things right? Am I doing the right things? And lastly, am I having fun? Fundamental, I think. So let's take a look at those three questions. Am I doing things right? This first question deals, of course, with the correct application of the methods you've been taught during your studies. Always remain critical towards yourself and be aware that the methods that you use for your research are subject to continuous improvement. I remember being taught the essentials of meta-analysis by a brilliant teacher, Anders Albo, in 2000. But now, 16 years later, the standards for meta-analysis have evolved greatly, and I force myself to continue to learn these new aspects. So keep on learning. This is not an end station. The first question also deals with the quality of your research, including the systematic approach you take in conducting research, the standards you hold, and of course, research integrity. In the past decade, due to unfortunate cases of scientific misconduct, many rules and regulations, you may have noticed them, have emerged to control the research process. The bureaucracy that has resulted often frustrates researchers. But at the same time, we should acknowledge that we have achieved more transparency. However, true transparency can, in my view, only come from you, the researcher, through the creation of an open research culture where it is normal to work in teams and networks, and it is okay to share your mistakes and learn from them. I hope that you will make an effort to create, create such working environments and aim to conduct research that is of value not only for your CV, but in particular for society. So let's move on to the next question. Am I doing the right things? I hope you can see the image. The second question deals with building your scientific network and understanding and adapting to the ever-changing society we live in. I can tell from experience that doing the right things becomes more and more important throughout your career. And it is something they do not necessarily teach you in university. So let me sketch two examples, one of them you can already see, of how the world and research is changing. And keep them in mind when you are thinking of doing the right things. Well, the picture you see there, it's a bit vague, I uh, should uh, acknowledge that, but it's actually uh, an object 
It's called Honey's object. It's a rare type of astronomical object called a quasar ionization echo. It has the size of a small galaxy. And it was discovered by a Dutch primary school teacher called Hani. Hani van Arkel. She was participating as a volunteer in the Galaxy Zoo project. Go look it up on the internet. Hani's object symbolizes to me a tremendous change in the way research is conducted in the 21st century compared to the 20th. In the 20th surgery, mainly highly learned old and gray professors, usually white males from the US or Europe, would make important discoveries seemingly all by themselves. Maybe a bit harsh to say it that way. But Galaxy Zoo, on the other hand, is an example of one of the many worldwide networks on the internet today that allows both scientists and the general public to make tremendous progress through what I call collective intelligence. My advice to you, if you want to do the right things, make sure that you are part of a network and share your expertise to accelerate research progress. Another example of how the world and science is changing is this video clip. People doing different jobs. And the first job we're going to draw is a firefighter. Okay. Have a think in your head what a firefighter looks like. Oh, no. What's your firefighter called? Mine's called Firefighter Gary. Firefighter Stan. <laughs> firefighter Simon. He's big and strong. He's got a big helmet on. That's brilliant, isn't it? Next, we're going to draw a surgeon. Have you thought of a name for your surgeon? Jim Bob. Jim Bob. He's a brain surgeon. I think he would wear a stethoscope. He gives you medicine. That's his ambulance. OK, next, we're going to draw a fighter pilot. Yes. This is his jet plane. He rescues people. He likes to do stunts in the air and stuff. OK, now, who would like to meet these people for real? Yeah! Are you at the dress stop? My name's Tamsin and I'm a surgeon in the NHS. My name's Lauren and I'm a pilot in the Royal Air Force. My name's Lucy, I'm a firefighter in the London Fire Brigade. Awareness of implicit bias and the added value of diversity is another 21st century phenomenon. The video illustrates the gender bias we all have to some extent. When it comes to a career in science, women are less likely to succeed due to this implicit bias. Be aware of it in your career and act upon it. The video also relates to the need for diversity in research. When it comes to creating diverse teams that spark innovation, but also when it comes to addressing gender in the content of research. For example, did you know that most of the medications that are being prescribed have mainly been tested in male animal models and clinical trials with mainly male patients? The gender innovations movement that is currently pushed by the European Union through Horizon 2020 is making us aware of the fact that the topic of gender in research has high priority. Not surprisingly, NIHES, as a frontrunner, has recently developed a course on women's health. There's a lot of work to be done in, the field of, well, in this field by researchers like yourself, and I urge you to think of gender the next time you design a study or write a grant proposal. So let's move on to the third question. Am I having fun? Very important question. Has been for me throughout my career. Money, success, fame, fortune and glory, although we may want to leave out money in our research field, <laughs> may seem very attractive. But in order to stay motivated to achieve these goals, through long hours and many frustrating moments when you did not obtain that grant or your experiments failed, it is necessary to go for the really cool water slides. Every now and then, take time to relax, broaden your view. I, for example, love going to improbable.com. Don't know if you've been there. 
It's a research community that aims to produce research that first makes you laugh and then makes you think. Here are a few examples. Yeah, I, I, I love it, going there. Uh, I shared this in my research group and inspired them. Uh, through dead doornails, flying potato chips, they organized a team event. And what they did is they actually tested the freshness of French fries, and they hypothesized that fresh, fresh French fries will develop mold sooner than those who are pre-processed probably hoping that through serendipity they would make a major scientific discovery, like with penicillin. But thus far, they have only achieved a very enjoyable day out with the team. They are still arguing about who has to edit the next version of the paper. And one of them had to live in a room with molding French fries for three months. That was part of the experiment. Well, I truly hope they will publish the paper before I retire because there's a magazine that you can publish these things in. So what I'm trying to say is that my advice to you is to find your own way to have fun in your work, to keep inspired, and very important, to inspire others, like these little kids. They'll grow up. So continue to ask yourself three questions. Am I doing things right? Am I doing the right things? And am I having fun? Take them home and use them. Ask yourself these questions on a regular basis. A last word of advice is from Dr. Levi Montalcini, a famous Italian neurobiologist who in 1986 won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the discovering of nerve growth factor. I tell young people, do not think of yourself Think of others. Think of the future that awaits you. Think about what you can do, and do not fear anything. I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs>